I would love to transform our cities into urban playgrounds that tickles our imagination and creates new relationships. I would love to share unique moments and new insights when working to make better and more inclusive cities. I would love to see more people involved in city development. And I would like to invite you to join me in my vision of a city that builds more communities than buildings. Some vision, huh? To realize this vision, we need a new approach to urban development. An approach where more voices are heard and where you can actually realize your dream for the city. This is not only democratic, it is also a good investment. And I'll tell you why, but first, I would like to tell you a bit about my experience in the city. I've always loved to explore cities and find deserted places of the cities. It's like an adventure to me to find an empty building, open the doors and see what hides behind. Entering the buildings, I love the smell. I love the mess. I, like, I love to look into the drawers and find old documents and tools that reveals the history of the building. I also like to meet the pin-up lady hanging on a poster on the wall and try to imagine whatever she has been exposed to back in the days. And then I start wondering, why is the building empty? So some years ago, I started to investigate how we could revitalize our buildings, the empty ones, by human activity. I began to explore how urban development works and I found out that to get influence, you need to attend these public meetings and workshops. So I went there. However, it seemed like all the decisions were already made attending these public meetings and that the influence I could get was very limited. So how can we involve more people in the urban development? I'd like to tell you this with an example. In 2010, or sorry, 2007, I met this guy, Christian, who had borrowed an old candy factory for a period while the ownership was being settled in a lawsuit. It was love at first sight. Christian had a great passion for the empty buildings. I had a great passion for the empty buildings. And we started to dream about how we could access more of these buildings. In 2010, our dream was fulfilled we established a non-profit organization that should give life to the empty buildings. The only problem was we had no empty buildings. So, while Christian was part of the candy factory, he biked past this old painting factory every day, and he saw that it stood empty, and it had been standing empty for five years. The buildings were worn down and creepy. The area was shut with fences. And the only life happening there was shady and uh, happened during the night. So we contacted the owner. And after long negotiations, we signed a two-year contract. We were meant to maintain the site and pay the tax. But other than that, we were pretty much able to do whatever we wanted with the buildings. Imagine that. We had no funding, though, so we needed help from people to bring life to the empty buildings. So we decided to open the doors and, and invite people in. We offered the facilities to people who needed a place to realize their projects. And we prioritized the ones that could bring life to the area through cultural and social activities. After six months, we opened the site officially with a big conference and an opening party. At this moment, the buildings were full of workshops, fixing bikes, making ceramics, art galleries, studios, office spaces, performance venues, a record company, a publishing agent, an urban garden outside the building, and much more. So, in six months, we had established a completely self-organized and self-financed community. 
that could take over the buildings, and we could gradually retreat. An association was formed that would renovate the buildings and pay the tax. Over the years, a curious crowd was spoiled with appealing events. Several organizations were born in the buildings, and the facilities were used day and night. This with no financial support from the owner or the municipality. After five years and a complete transformation of the buildings from being sad and grey to colourful and vibrant, the buildings were sold to an investment company. They tore down the buildings and will now build a self-storage property. This is like the worst alternative to this great community ever. Now, the community activities will be replaced with a wall, and the life there will be cars going in and out. The good thing about this story is that by involving a lot of good people and together create a vision that transcends the physical structures of the buildings, the community survived and is now located in another part of the city. So all in all, this is a good example on an alternative approach to urban development where you can actually realize dreams while also developing a local area through cultural activities. Now, to another project, and to someone who has given great value to the city through an alternative approach to urban development. In 2013, we were invited to transform this parking lot. A traditional way to do this would be to spend a lot of money on a physical transformation of the, build, of the square. Instead, we invited the local residents of the area, and together, we built a vision of a vibrant market square that should gather the local, the local community through cultural activities. One of the citizens we met was Lise. Lise is middle-aged, unemployed, and she lives with her two dogs that she loves more than anything in the world. When Lise used to walk her dogs in the area, she met addicts and prostitutes, and she was she didn't find many places to hang out with her friends, and she was eager to change this. So she showed up at our first gathering, where we spent a weekend with the local kids of the area. We were building an outdoor stage, so they had a place to perform. In many ways, Lise is a citizen like you and me. She likes to keep up with the development of her area, and she has a lot of ideas, actually, Many, many ideas on how to improve her area. In one point, she is different than many of us, though, as she has borderline, that is a mental condition, where you have difficulties finding out the social norms that we all tend to navigate by. This makes it a bit confusing, sometimes difficult to work with her. This might explain Lysa's rather impulsive behavior during this weekend where we built the stage. And she suddenly just disappeared, went out to the area and knocked doors, and all of a sudden she came back with four local bands that played at this opening event. As I sat there with my beer, listening to music, it all made sense to me. It only took one weekend to transform the square, and now the community of the area could start to use the square in a new way. The square now looks like this. And um, Lise was recently elected president. <laughs> not of Denmark, not of the world, <laughs> but of the civic association that will now continue the positive development of the square and actually the whole area. Lysa has, made, uh, has opened many doors to local residents of the area and also decision makers. And she has played a huge part in the development of the area. But most important, Lysa is now part of a community 
and she finds great meaning in her volunteer work. Imagine for a moment if Lisa would have reached this point by attending a public meeting. I think not. So what can we learn from these stories about how to approach urban development in a new way? Well, we have squares, people and buildings in every city I've been to, so we have all we need to get started. And if we involve our local communities in urban development, they can actually run our empty squares and buildings for a low or no cost and find great meaning in this. So this is both sustainable and it is a good investment to develop cities by building communities. But uh, it is not free of charge to read this point. So what should we do to fulfill the full potential of the cities? We need to see more private developers invest more responsibly in our cities and find the potential of the people in the cities. We need the public sector to give more power, power to the citizens and create alternative frames for involvement. And we need all of you guys to go, go out there in the city and start imagining how your area could improve and share this vision with your neighbor. In other words, we all have a role to play in urban development, so don't hesitate. Go activate. Thank you. <laughs>